Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We just missed Arwen being exciting. You know, she's growing up, not a baby anymore, so she decided she needs a nap after all that activity. Horse butt. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about parasites. Specifically, I wanted to talk about external parasites. Because your goat, like a lot of creatures, can get parasites either inside or on the coat or on the skin. So, I wanted specifically today to start talking about external parasites. The kind that can crawl on the skin. She's going to take a nap. But the kind that can crawl on the skin or uh, crawl in the hair or even get in the nasal passages. Pony scratching. Good scratches. Thank you, ducks. Ignore the ducks. They're just, you know, determined to be as loud as possible right now. Thank you. Anyway, so let's talk about external parasites. There are three basic kinds of parasites. You've got your flies, you've got lice, and you've got mites. So flies, we're going to start with, are annoying, but they tend not to be super dangerous. There are a couple of kinds that are really annoying. Um, specifically, bot flies can be irritating, but in general, flies are not difficult to deal with even bot flies so what do bot flies do they kind of look like for example uh maybe kind of a weirdly colored honeybee so they're kind of a larger fly they look a little bit strange but what they do is they kind of buzz around hover around the nose lay eggs on the goat and then when those eggs hatch hi shadow facts this is about arwen I guess you can get bot flies too, but you know, this is actually about Arwen. Excuse me, horse butt. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, so bot flies, when the eggs hatch, they can crawl up the nasal passages, so crawling up the nose, or they can actually burrow into the skin. Then the larva grows up and then exits the body. They're really, really annoying, and the goat will find them really annoying. But they're also self-limiting. It means once it's done, it's done. So what will happen is the larva exit the goat, they drop onto the ground, and you're done. The wound heals up, they get over it. It's best if your goats don't end up with bot flies, but if they do, it's not the biggest thing in the entire world. It's, it's fine. It's not fine, but it's manageable. You know what? You had lots of grass already today. Look at that chubby tummy. You don't need any more grass. Yeah, no more grass for you. He's like, no, I want grass. Back to <laughs> So it's best if you can keep things like bot flies and gnats and things away because it's better to not have to deal with them in the first place. Even if they're not a super big deal, it's still better to avoid the problem. So do what you can to deter flies. Some people like to use fly sprays. Some people like to use powders. Other people like to hang things in their, in their barnyard to try to deter the flies. Whatever you want to do, you can do in order to keep the flies at bay. Okay? Stop stomping. I'm going to punch your butt. Hey, butt. Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to refill your water in a minute. You don't need any more grass. It's very windy today, in case anybody cares. So, with flies, yes, they're a parasite. Yes, they're freaking annoying. Keep them away if you can. If you can't, you know, it, it's not typically the end of the world, but try. So, the next thing we're going to talk about is lice. Lice you need to deal with. You can't kind of just be like, well, that'll go away eventually, because it won't. Okay, you need to deal with lice. There are several different times, types of lice. Um, some feed on the hair of the goat, some feed on the blood. No matter what kind they are, lice make your goat very, very itchy. They lead to skin irritation, rough coats. They can lead to hair loss. They can lead to anemia. You can end up with a very sick goat if you don't deal with lice. Now, we all talk about how you have to deal with lice, and you do. At some point, most people end up with them in their barnyard. 
The good news is they're species specific. So if your goat has lice, you're not going to get it because those lice don't like you. Even if they crawl onto you, they can't feed on you. So you're not going to end up with lice from your goat, but it's still gross and you have to deal with it. They're common and they're also not good. So deal with the lice as soon as you can. Um, depending on where you live, that will kind of dictate uh, what is available for treatment. Some people like to use liquids, like here we use poron ivermectin um, on the goats if they get lice. Uh, other places you might use something else. Some people use powders, you know, all kinds of different stuff. If you're not sure what to use, contact your vet. They'll actually have a solution they can sell you and it's not expensive. Contact your livestock vet. They will have a solution that you can just use. Use it according to their directions. The lice will clear up real quick. Deal with them before they're a really big problem. And just know that lice happen to everyone. Okay, it's some like he came with lice. This guy had lice on him when we got him, and so we had to deal with that. So it happens to everyone. It doesn't mean you weren't looking after your animals. It just means now someone got lice, you gotta deal with it. It's just like with kids. Okay, deal with the lice because you have to. Deal with it sooner rather than later. The third category of external parasites is mites. These guys are a super big deal. If your goat has mites, deal with it right now. <laughs> Okay, right now. These guys will burrow in the skin or even feed on the surface of the skin and they are not good because they actually create a discharge. The actual mite creates this discharge that causes scaly, inflamed, and even patchy, hairless skin. It's really uncomfortable for the goat and depending on the type of uh, mite, it could be mange, it could be scabies, it could be scab. There's a lot of different things it could be. Chewing your cud? Chewing your cud's a good thing? Yeah. Chewing your cud like a good goat? Nice. But yes, mites can be a lot of different types of mite, and you do want to deal with it really, really fast. They are highly contagious and they can be deadly. So mites can kill your goats. So handle it as quickly as you can. Aggressive treatment is required. Um, usually you can deal with it with just topical treatments, you probably want to call your vet. You probably want the vet to identify what kind of mite you're dealing with and to tell you what product to use. So you might be able to get that product over the counter. Yeah, you might be able to get it over the counter. Look at those divies. Look at those little divers. Yeah. But you might be able to get that product over the counter. If you can, great. But no shame in getting it from your livestock vet. That's where I typically get stuff when I have to deal with things. It's not super expensive again. That stuff is not horribly expensive. So find out what's used. Again, here, uh, poron ivermectin is the go-to because it is really good against insects. We apply it on the back of the neck in the appropriate dosage. The horse biting my arm. The horse biting my arm. He's like, no, wasn't even. <laughs> sure. I felt it. <laughs> so you do want to treat as quickly as possible we use poron ivermectin for most things here there's a couple of things that the ivermectin isn't effective against and so we have to use something else usually in that case i get product from my veterinarian but figure out what it's what it is that's common to use in your area because d different areas have different mites so you don't necessarily want to be using what we use even though ivermectin does tend to be pretty good at most of the things but still consult your vet find out what you should be using in your area because obviously you probably don't live where I live but here we use a lot of poron ivermectin for uh, external parasites anyway next week we will come back hang out with Arwen and we will talk about internal parasites which are a different kettle of fish and require a different type of treatment you can't just pop something on their back and hope it goes away so we will talk about that next week. Until then, we'll see you tomorrow.